Hello there ladies and gentlemen, this is Orphan Last, aka Skylar Madison, and today I'm going to be working on the subscriber drawing request series. I worked really hard on this image, and I finished the entire image in this video, unlike some of my other Patreon drawing request videos. And to me, it looks sort of like something that I could easily envision as an advertisement or possibly some sort of celebratory sort of image. Now one of my patrons said that it's just so hot outside, and since all he really wants is a beer, uh, that I should draw a beer or something. And the other patron, I think he was thinking that I was going to be drawing some sort of picture in celebration of the 4th of July. Uh, I've never actually celebrated any real holidays on my channel. It's not really my thing. Uh, because he wants me to draw balloons in the shape of a tank. Now, that's plural. He wanted me to draw more than one balloon that's in the shape of a tank. But the thing is, if you draw a balloon in a shape that's nothing like how people perceive balloons, people might not know that it's supposed to be a balloon. So I was careful to make sure that it was accompanied with balloons that are actually the shape of what people perceive balloons being. So the first thing that I do is I hunt down some images that I want to use as references. References that not only represent a good portrayal of the subject matter, but images that made me feel something. I guess as much as a picture of beer can evoke some sort of emotion or something. I mean, personally speaking, the last time I had a beer was about three years ago, so I don't really have an emotional connection to the subject matter. The reference image that I chose has a ton of reflections and really good lighting. I wanted to use that. The second reference image that I found was an image of a tank. I couldn't find any search results for balloons in the shape of a tank, so although it'd be pretty cool to have the product in the market someplace, it just simply doesn't exist. Now I followed the reference rather loosely because how much can a balloon closely resemble an actual tank? Since I was drawing in perspective, I needed a reference that at least showed two sides of the tank rather well. So I placed my references into my Affinity Designer document and began drawing. I knew that I wanted a different camera angle than what was represented inside of the reference images. And you can do that as long as you understand the shapes that are involved in your reference, or at least are willing to learn what the shapes are by studying your reference. Now, the super rough sketch was me just sketching freehand with no actual vanishing point and no grid. Sometimes I need to start out organically to just get a feel of how the image should come together. Now I'm visualizing that there's a vanishing point somewhere near the bottom of the composition, but I'm not actually being super loyal to any one particular point when I'm doing this. And I'm not super attached to any set of lines or anything like that. I draw them out as quick as I can, and by that what I mean is I go as fast as I can while still having at least a rough bit of control over how the image is coming together. But once I actually decide on on an actual vanishing point with my perspective grid, the image gets refined quite a bit, meaning the directions that things are pointing change quite a bit, because it winds up being a much more formally drawn image. But this is a step that I went through just to try and get a rough understanding of what the composition was going to be and how it was going to come together. Now in the first Babylon 5 fan art drawing video, I discovered a really handy way of making your perspective grid in the least amount of time humanly possible. And so that's the workflow that I decided to undertake to make my perspective grid. Maybe I'll make a shorter video about it later on down the road, but for now, the Curvilinear Perspective series does the job just fine for now. So when I'm actually ready to start drawing, I start out by drawing out some perspective boxes. One of the things that I love about Krita is that you're able to draw with black the whole time, but you can just click on a layer and draw things in multiple colors because you're able to turn off channels to that layer. Well, I discovered how you can do that inside of Affinity Designer and Affinity Photo. You basically just make an adjustment layer and make sure that that adjustment layer is parented to just that one layer. You get the channel mixer in the adjustment layer menu and you dial up the alpha to 100%. And you can access this drop down menu that allows you to access more than just the reds on that layer. You can access the greens and the blues. And remember, colors on digital media are mixed with red, green, and blue. Those are your primary colors with digital media. So technically, depending on how much you play with the alpha on each of those channels, you can potentially 
essentially make any color using this method, although I have found difficulty accomplishing that. As you can see, everything that I've drawn on this layer winds up being red. It just all turned red. It went from being black, and now it's red, because the red channel is dialed all the way up. I then start measuring out from the initial box that I drew out to find out where my second bottle should be placed within the scene. If I'm able to make sure that everything in the scene is a predictable measurement away from one another, I'm able to figure things out fairly quickly down the road. Drawing in perspective is kind of like being a blind man and your sonar is a series of carefully crafted X's. You're looking for a lot of little intersections between lines. And now you see me erasing some of the squares that I constructed because those are just measurements that I wanted to log in my mind. Just keep them in the back of my mind remembering that, okay, those exist in theory. If I need to find out where that other bottle is, I now know where it is. I sort of picture the distances of objects as a checkerboard when I'm drawing in perspective, and I know where that second bottle is on that checkerboard. The next thing that I do is I draw out all of the measurements that I need to draw the bottom ellipse for the first bottle. Once I find the ellipse for the bottom of the bottle, I don't get rid of the measurements for the first ellipse. I don't get rid of that bottom square that I drew out for it. Instead, I carry all four corners of that box up to the height that I need and construct the top face of this red rectangular box. And I do all the measurements that I need in order to construct the top ellipse for the bottle. I then do a few more measurements from the measurements that are left over from making the ellipse. And I start to construct a box that's smack dab at the center of the rectangular box, or at the center of that ellipse at the top. And I go ahead and draw out this new rectangular box that's much thinner in blue. Once I have all of my construction lines looking rather good, I spend some time with my black sketch layer to line out some of the dimensions of what I see in my reference and make sure that those things are visible in my picture. The next thing that I focus on is trying to get the height of both bottles to be the same. It's important to make sure that your proportions are universally correct throughout your entire image. The reason for this rectangle is so that I can use this corner and draw this edge out. And once I have this intersection right here in relationship to this line, I'm able to determine the height of the other bottle as it extends to my east vanishing point, changing the direction of the line. But this makes sure that you're able to still change directions if you need to, which you don't always need to, but you will. And it also makes sure that things are the same height. So now I can draw out the other bottle as a rectangular box. If you have two identical objects at two different distances from the imaginary camera, you need to make sure that they are at the same height. You have to. They have to have the same proportions. One will be drawn out smaller because it'll be a little bit further away away, or maybe possibly much further away. It depends on what you're drawing. But they still need to have the same proportions. I need to find out the height towards my second bottle's bottle cap. I find the center of the top of the second bottle, and I draw out the center of the first bottle and draw a line from the first bottle going straight up. Then I create a green square next to my second bottle cap and find center for that. So I draw a blue line from this new green square's center going up. Then I draw a line from the center of the bottle cap to this blue line that I just drew out and that intersection, and then I change directions to my east vanishing point, where at the center of my second bottle is. I draw a line going up to that line that I just drew out to the east vanishing point. And now I know where the top of my bottle cap is going to be for my second bottle, right at that intersection. So if I draw out in 2D what a sketch of a bottle would look like, it would look like a stick of dynamite. But this is how you should visualize the sketch for a bottle in perspective. 
It's a rectangular box with a stick pointing out of its center, right at the top. I have a bunch of imaginary objects that I drew out that I use to measure out proportions as they extend towards the vanishing points. Technically speaking, these are planes. I'll talk more on that later. Maybe all of this seems a bit confusing, so I'll delete them and you'll maybe be able to see the box with the stick pointing out of the top uh, to represent the second bottle, the rough sketch of the bottle. Maybe you'll be able to see it. Now, all of this may seem super complicated, but it's really not. These are simple techniques. It's just that there's a ton of simple techniques all congested into one small region of the canvas. It looks difficult, it looks complicated, but if you tell yourself that it's difficult and it's complicated, then it is. If it feels impossible, then you'll never be able to do it. If you allow yourself to be intimidated, you'll never be able to do it. Whereas if you just do it, you can do it. And I do have faith in you. You know, I remember my high school art teacher inviting professional artists to at least attempt to teach me perspective in class. Now, they were teaching the whole class, but they were there to teach me because of my conversations with my art teacher. And when they taught, I was so confused. I oftentimes felt as though they were overcomplicating things and that you could just totally remove one technique after another after another. It'd be so much easier. All these techniques that they were showing in class, pfft, nonsense. That's just stupid. But I really just wish that I would have just shut my brain off and just listened to them. So if you're in that same boat as how I was when I was a teenager, if you're watching me work and you're thinking like how I thought, just listen to me. Really, seriously, please just listen to me. This is how it's done. But it's not like I'm teaching advanced calculus here. I'm probably doing it the most simplistic way humanly possible. I might have known better and more advanced ways of doing it if I had just turned my brain off and listened to them, but this is what I got and this is what I've learned on my own. And it works. Trust me when I say it's a lot easier to be handed the wheel rather than having to reinvent the wheel. So now that I've gone ahead and already cued you guys in on how I drew out the first bottle, you can see that I use the exact same workflow to construct the second bottle. I draw the bottom ellipse, I draw the top ellipse, I join them together to make a cylinder, I draw out a box at the exact center of that cylinder, and I draw an ellipse at the top of that box. I know that the bottle cap will be slightly bigger and slightly above that. I eyeball an ellipse, draw out the bottle cap, and then I draw out a shape that closely mirrors what I see is on the first bottle and what it's doing. Just copying and pasting the first bottle doesn't work. Your point of view on the second bottle is different. The angle that the imaginary camera is looking at towards the first bottle is a different angle than when it's looking at the second bottle. And you can go ahead and try to Photoshop a bunch of techniques and stuff, try to warp it so that it fits that other vantage point, but ultimately you'd be wasting your time. It's better for you as an artist and it's better for the image if you just draw out the other bottle from scratch. Scratch. Then there's the two full glasses of beer. The first thing that I do is I decide how big the base for my first cup is going to be. Then I measure out to find out where and how big the second glass of beer is going to be by measuring out some extensions. I then draw out two ellipses at the center of the bottom of the glasses of beer. At the center of these ellipses, I draw out two rectangular boxes. These two boxes are drawn out with red, green, and purple lines. The reason for so many colors is so that I can make heads or tails of the image. This might be a little bit confusing because I do a lot of weird things at this point trying to figure out the image. But ultimately when I'm drawing, I'm mainly worried about if I can make heads or tails of the image. I'm just trying to work things out. I'm sorry if it winds up being a little bit confusing to you. But I make sure that these two boxes are the same height by drawing out one big square in perspective where the top face of these boxes are. And then draw out the other lines to the top faces that I need. This big square is me drawing out an imaginary plane and making sure that both squares are on that plane. Now a plane in perspective is the same as it is in geometry, although trying to describe what a plane is is always tedious. A, a plane doesn't really exist in reality. It's just an imaginary concept. 
And I never want to use the terminology used inside of a textbook because it always makes me want to punch the author of said textbook in the face. Think of a plane as an imaginary flat surface that can be placed in any location in three-dimensional space. In geometry, in geometry, it's an imaginary flat surface that extends for eternity. Usually a plane in perspective is a flat surface or face or square that you draw out in perspective and you eventually erase it. You draw it to make sure that things start and end at the same measurement, making sure that your proportions are just right. They just help you make sure that your proportions are correct throughout your entire composition. After doing this step, I find out that I don't like how tall I made the stems to these cups. So I draw out a box in purple and get rid of the green. And I draw out another plane, just like I did. I'm just repeating the same process. And that helps me reconstruct these boxes that are at the center of these two ellipses. I'm sorry that this might be confusing at this point. Once that's accomplished, I draw in how I think the shape of these stems should look with my black sketch lines. I then use the blue lines used to make the ellipses to construct a rectangular box. I decide on the height of the cups by drawing out the top face of this rectangular box. Using the green layer, I draw out a rather large plane and I also draw a small plane that's at the bottom of my cups, where my ellipses are. And this helps me determine where the top rather large plane should go towards my other ellipse. Using my purple lines, I can now draw the rectangular box for the cup that's closest to the imaginary camera. I couldn't do that until I made sure that the top of the glass is going to be as tall as the other glass. And I accomplished that by using two separate planes. I then draw out an ellipse for both glasses of beer and then I eyeball the rest. I suppose I could have done a ton of measuring and a ton of ellipses at different heights of the cups, but that would have taken much longer and would have made it much more difficult and wouldn't have made much of a difference. It would have made the image look exactly the same as how it currently does. It wouldn't have been a very big improvement or, or possibly might have actually made the image so complex that it wouldn't have been worth it because I wouldn't have been able to make heads or tails out of anything that I was looking at. So I eyeballed this section, meaning I just freehanded it without using a whole bunch of rules. I just drew what looked good. I then eyeball ellipses on both cups of beer to represent where the foam of the beer is going to be. Now it's okay to eyeball an ellipse as long as it's next to another ellipse. Otherwise you might just draw some weird circular object that doesn't match the camera angle and just winds up making the image look confusing. I then draw out the table that the beer is resting on and decide to follow my reference rather loyally and decide to actually place it in the corner of the room. I look over my composition and try to visualize how the balloons are going to fit in the composition and decide to move things around a bit. There's nothing too special about how I constructed the balloons. I really didn't use any rules or anything. Even the balloon shaped like a tank. I roughly used the perspective grid to tell me how things would come together with it, but it's a balloon. It's round and bubbly. I really didn't even need to use my reference. How much can a balloon resemble a tank? Sure, I was visualizing boxes and such, but I didn't bother drawing them out as boxes because, again, balloons are round and bubbly. I just eyeballed it. Again, I wanted to copy my reference rather loyally to the bottles of beer. In the reference, the walls seemed to be constructed out of long beams of wood. So I drew out one beam at the bottom, turned one section into a square, then measured a bunch of extensions to make sure that each beam of wood was the exact same height. And that was the construction for the entire image right there. At this point, I sort of wasted time by sketching out the colors for the image. I don't know why I do this sometimes. I never use the colors used inside of the color sketch because it's always a low opacity. Otherwise it would wind up interfering with what I'm coloring later on down the road. Maybe some people like the sloppy rough coloring stage because it's rather impressionistic, but I guess maybe I just wanted to visualize the image better before I actually wound up coloring the image officially. I don't know, maybe that's why I do it. Then this is where I started to ink the image with vectors. At this point, all the really hard work has already been done so I feel at this point I can go unscripted now okay so this is gonna go really fast <laughs> this 
the time lapse is at a ridiculously fast speed here. And some of the reason is because I, I worked really hard on this image. Like I said at the beginning of the video, I spent a lot of my time uh, working on this, more time than I normally do. And uh, yeah, trying to fit that into a, a 20 minute video or something like that. I mean, the videos that go over 20 minutes, they, they get less watch time and such, so. Yeah, th there's nothing to really say about the inking process other than if you don't like how something looks, regardless of how much math it took to, to do it, just fix it. Uh, visually fix it. And uh, ellipses and such like that. They will always be a perfect ellipse. And so if you just use one of the shape tools, that's all you need. Uh, this image, I, I wound up doing a lot of experimental things. Uh, I wound up using multicolored vector line work. And uh, this wound up making a few challenges along the way. Such as, uh, basically, since color is contextual, uh, I kept changing the, the colors to the line work for the glasses, the, the cups full of beer. And, you know, it, that was a little frustrating, but more than that, I, I usually don't have to worry about the stacking order of my vector line work. But since it was all inked and using multicolors and such like that, I found that there would be black lines that were overlapping over my uh, my lighter colored lines for the glass. I, I, I think the color that I wound up ultimately settling with for the glasses of beer, I, I think I settled with a white or just a slight off-white color. Uh, but right now on the screen what you're seeing is that they're blue. I, I was thinking that would work but it wound up looking so out of place and cartoony. And looking back, I'm thinking about it, and I'm thinking that the each slat of wood should have probably been uh, a brown color for the line work on that. And I, I might just adjust that before I make this image, the full resolution image available for my patrons and such. I, I did a really dang good job with the color work in this image. When I have a reference, I, I, and I don't really oftentimes have an opportunity that I, I see to, to work on a, uh, with a reference for the coloring. But I really did a good job, all the way down to putting in the carbonation into the, uh, the drinks, uh, the glasses of water and such like that. And I put reflections and, and glowing, uh, th little things that glow inside of the, the glasses of beer. Not only that, but the shadows for the beer, uh, for the glasses of beer. Uh, I, I wound up googling wine glasses because uh, I didn't think that I would be able to find beer glass uh, sort of, I, I guess, uh, shadows and such like that. And uh, you, here you see me actually putting the reflection of the actual glass of beer onto the beer itself. And I kind of cheated a little bit. I copied the the glass of beer and just kind of warped it. And uh, it still wound up taking a lot of time, effort, and work, but it wound up looking really good. I don't usually make reflections, and so this was an interesting sort of exercise for me to do. And that's ultimately how I see this image. Uh, ultimately as an exercise. I don't really see it as uh, anything else really. I, I, I see it as just, uh, uh, I, I don't know, it's not the sort of thing that I normally draw, if that makes sense. It's not something that I I would set out to draw, drawing beer, okay. Uh, but whatever, I mean, I, I figured if I'm going to be drawing some beer, I, I might as well make it the best damn picture with beer in it as humanly possible. So yeah, I, I googled, <clears throat> like, wine glass uh, shadows and I noticed that there were specific characteristics as to how the light not only shined through the the glass but with how light would shine through a glass full of wine and I tried to kind of mimic that a little bit I don't think that the shadows at least the shapes of them wound up looking quite right at least one of them I I, I don't think looks quite right but 
everything else looks pretty good, it, but it, it's good enough to where it's like I, I can still be proud of the image. That's one of the things that I, I've never really quite gotten down, shadows. And uh, it's something that I'm working on, but it still looks good. I'm really happy with how the image came out. And uh, yeah, here are the balloons. I went ahead and searched for a reference of, for a balloon to kind of see how the colors go. In the last Patreon drawing request, I, I wound up drawing a balloon in it as well. Uh, but I didn't wind up looking for a reference because I didn't think it was relevant. But, yeah. Anyways, I I'm thinking of ch making a change with the Patreon drawing request series where it might possibly become like somewhat of a collaboration of ideas with my patrons and me. Where we we're trying to come up with ideas as to what I can draw next so that it's something that I would actually want to draw because um, if it's just something that I don't want to draw <laughs> uh, a lot of times I don't feel like drawing it anyways this is how the final image came out looking I think it looks really excellent I'm really happy with it anyways guys that pretty much concludes it for this video if you guys enjoyed it please feel free to like share and subscribe and if you guys would like to get more notifications from me feel free to click on the bell in the upper right corner there's a picture of my mascot if you click on that you'll be able to get to my patreon and if you'd like to support my channel it'd be much appreciated if you'd like to see more of my content feel free to click on anything else that's appearing on the screen right now thank you very much for your time